Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. After more than two decades of eluding the U.S. Congress legislated Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995 with three separate American presidents systematically signing waivers to postpone the relocation of the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, President Donald Trump's decision to follow through on his elections pledge has materialized today with a festive inauguration ceremony at the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman urges Syrian President Bashar Assad to ask the leadership in Tehran to remove its military units from Syria, warning of dangerous consequences if Iran continues to entrench itself along Israel's northern frontier. Thousands of Iranians attend anti-American protests across the Islamic Republic in response to Washington's decision to pull out of the multinational nuclear agreement reimpose crippling sanctions against Tehran. After more than two decades of eluding the U.S. Congress legislated Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995 with three separate American presidents systematically signing waivers to postpone the relocation of the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, citing security concerns, President Donald Trump's decision to follow through on his elections pledge has materialized today with a festive inauguration ceremony at the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. During a first event at Israel's foreign ministry in Jerusalem, marking the historic move, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu took the opportunity to once again voice Israel's gratitude, declaring Trump's decision as affirming a historic truth. President Trump is making history. We are deeply grateful, and our people will be eternally grateful for his bold decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to move the embassy there. The Israeli leader further called on the international community to follow in the footsteps of the United States. Netanyahu claimed that an international recognition of Jerusalem would bring peace closer, as it will establish a foundation of truth in which Jerusalem will remain Israel's capital forever. I call on all countries to join the U.S. in moving their embassies to Jerusalem. Move your embassies to Jerusalem because it's the right thing to do. And move your embassies to Jerusalem, listen to this, move your embassies to Jerusalem because it advances peace. And that is, that's because you can't base peace on a foundation of lies. You base peace on the foundations of truth. And the truth is that not only has Jerusalem been the capital of the Jewish people for millennia and the capital of our state from its inception, the truth is that under any peace agreement you could possibly imagine, Jerusalem will remain Israel's capital. Meanwhile, Trump administration officials still believe in their ability to promote the peace process despite Palestinian anger over the relocation of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was asked in an interview on Fox News whether the peace process was dead, to which he replied with a firm negative. The American top diplomat stressed, we're working hard on it and we hope we can achieve a successful outcome there as well. Nevertheless, the chief advisor to Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas rejected Washington's optimism, emphasizing that the relocation of the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem has ended the role of the United States as the ultimate peace mediator. What Mr. Trump has done is not a question of whether we like his deal of the century or not. It's not a question of whether a give and take if you give us a little bit more here, we will allow you to take a little bit more there. No, it ended from our point of view the role of the United States as the broker, the owner of the peace process, which the United States have really done since 1991. And what, what we have really been uh, pushed into is to try to build a new format for a peace process. 
Meanwhile, Israeli defense officials have voiced concern about an escalation on the country's southern frontier with the Gaza Strip. Officials warned of exceptionally violent riots along the border fence of the Palestinian enclave in a response to the opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem today. Protests that will reach an all-time high tomorrow on Nakba Day, the day the Palestinians commemorate Israel's declaration of independence as a day of catastrophe. According to assessments, approximately 100,000 Palestinians will participate in tomorrow's protests. The IDF blames Hamas for exploiting the demonstrations in order to carry out acts of terror under cover of the masses, to damage defense infrastructure and to carry out attacks inside Israeli territory. An IDF statement on the matter read, Hamas has been dragging the public in the Gaza Strip into a violent event that is not in its best interests. Now to a related matter, the IDF announced that it had successfully struck and demolished yet another underground attack tunnel on Saturday in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. The IDF spokesperson's unit released a video of the operation in which a series of explosions can be seen from the site of the tunnel. While the Israeli military emphasized that it will continue to operate against any infrastructure that aims to target the Jewish state, Gaza residents claimed that the explosions targeted a large electricity generator and an outpost of the Islamist Hamas organization. No injuries were reported as a result of the Israeli operation. Now, with regard to the conflagration with the Islamic Republic, Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman urged Syrian President Bashar Assad to ask the leadership in Tehran to remove its military units from Syria, warning of dangerous consequences if Iran continues to entrench itself along Israel's northern frontier. Mr. Assad, Taifa Tehranim, Taifa Qasem Soleimani, Vekoach Kurz, Emlo Zerimlacha, Emrak Pogim. ומכל הנוכחות שלהם יהיו אך ורק בעיות ונזקים. תעיפו את האיראנים ואפשר באמת פה לעבור אולי לחיים אחרים. The demand by Israel's top defense official came after Iranian-backed militias fired rockets toward Israel, a move that prompted the heaviest Israeli military response against more than 50 Iranian targets across Syria. While Minister Lieberman emphasized Israel's resolve in thwarting Iran's mobilization in Israel's northern neighbor, the defense minister stressed that Jerusalem is not looking for further confrontation with anybody. <laughs> לא מן השפה החוצה שזה מסר אמיתי ואנחנו באמת לא מחפשים שום חיכוך, שום עימות נוסף עם אף אחד. אנחנו לא באנו לגבול האיראני, הם באו לכאן. Meanwhile, the chief of the U.S. Central Command, General Joseph Votel, condemned Iran's missile attack on Israel last week, warning it was raising the stakes and the opportunity for miscalculation and conflict in this region. Um, this is unacceptable uh, and uh, it's highly dangerous and it is raising the stakes and, uh, and the opportunity for miscalculation and conflict in this, uh, in this region. And uh, we can only hold Iran and in particular the Iranian uh, uh, Revolutionary Guards Corps, uh, the IRGC, responsible for this. They are the principal element that is responsible for this type of facilitation. So we think all the all nations of the world should make it very clear that this type of behavior is unacceptable by Iran and by the IRGC and should call on them to stop these types of activities throughout the region. Now to a related matter, thousands of Iranians attended anti-U.S. protests across the Islamic Republic in response to Washington's decision to pull out of the multinational nuclear agreement and reimpose crippling sanctions against Tehran. Meanwhile, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani said he had asked his foreign minister, Muhammad Javad Zarif, to negotiate with European countries, China and Russia, in the coming weeks in what is seen as a last-ditch effort to save Tehran's nuclear deal. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and Shavuot Tov. And we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.